Pete Buttigieg loves God, beer, and his electric Mustang. Sure, the U.S. Secretary of Transportation has thoughts on building bridges, but infrastructure occupies just a sliver of his voluminous mind. That's apparently Wired Magazine's biggest takeaway from interviewing the Secretary of Transportation in a piece published today and going viral. Reporter Virginia Heffernan did not ask Buttigieg about East Palestine, Ohio, not once, doesn't appear in the document, or what he's doing to prevent train derailments, protections for airline customers, really anything specifically having to do with his actual job. Instead, the two of them discussed Tucker Carlson, impossible meat, conspiracy theories on the right, Buttigieg's belief in God, and of course, January 6th. Can't forget that. Journalist Zay Jelani reacted to the piece, quote, why did someone interview the Secretary of Transportation and ask almost no questions about transportation. That's why uh, this interview is going viral. I have to say it is one of the most, it's a fawning, uh, it's hey geography. It, it is so favorable to Buttigieg. It begins, the curious mind of Pete Buttigieg holds much of its functionality in reserve. Uh, <laughs> she she's, describes him as a, a clockwork man, able to carry on conversation while, while solving a Rubik's Cube in one part of his mind and playing the piano and then doing masculine things like like drinking beer, which I don't know if that's a masculine thing anymore, <laughs> given all the, the woke Bud Light Dylan Mulvaney sure. takeover. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I kid, thought we had these days behind us. This is how Buttigieg reared onto the scene with all of the, these uh, articles that were written about how he was like the smartest boy that ever lived. Uh, this piece says, um, you know, I slowly become aware that his cabinet job requires only a modest portion of his cognitive powers. Other mental facilities, no kidding, are apportioned to the Iliad, Puritan, Puritan histiography, Nosgard Spring, though not in the original Norwegian, slacker. You know, like, it's it's like yeah. the idea that this guy spoke a handful of languages, which came into dispute later on how actually fluent he was with them, and that he, I don't know, took a classics right. course in college, were supposed to be a substitute for a real interview about his role in government. I think the only question specifically about uh, running the Department of Transportation uh, comes in this form. Quote, running DOT seems to suit you. Are there more ways the challenges of transportation speak to your spiritual side? <laughs> Just wild. So to be clear, wild. there was not just the accident in East Palestine. There have been a number of train derailments that have now all been memory hold because they've been more too many to count. Remember, he made that comment um, when asked to respond to the East Palestine disaster, saying, well, these things happen like a thousand times a year, which he was torn apart for, rightly so. There was the huge airline crisis over the holidays where, what, like millions of Americans were stranded and not able to get to their holiday travel. The most kind of massive grounding of planes in recent history, if not ever. No questions about that. You know, it, it's a real dereliction of responsibility from a journalistic perspective, but you also have to ask why it is that someone would be elevating Buttigieg in this sort of a way. I, I think transparently, I mean, this reads like, uh, this man is so perfect. He's so smart. He can speak eloquently on every subject. Yeah, he knows so everything. Have him. Why yep. shouldn't he be president? That's, I mean, that's the, that's that's the, the subtext here. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's it's. This is an, adverti it's an advertisement for Pete Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. And articles like this are the only reason he is a thing to begin with. He was the mayor of a town. The fourth largest town <laughs> in the state of Indiana. <laughs> right, mean, Indiana? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, South Bend, um, this population is just over 100,000 people. There are buildings in China with more people in them than that. I mean, like, it, seriously. Uh, and, and They're suddenly, still in there. They're not allowed to leave their homes. Stop. <laughs> The national conversation, he, in magazine cover after magazine cover, I remember this in, in 2019, going to a doctor's office, mm -hmm. like, or, or I guess a little bit before that, 2017, 2018, going to a friend's house, seeing the Washingtonian. You know, every magazine that you looked at would have Pete Buttigieg's face on the cover. And it really did create this weird social phenomenon where we were supposed to invest in his abilities in a way that was way outsized his actual performance. Mm. And now that he has a real job and a real administration, not to say that being the mayor of South End is a real job, but now that he has a more high profile job with more responsibilities, he's quite literally failing at that job and still getting plaudits from the press. I smell a nefarious plot by Big Magazine <laughs> to have Pete Buttigieg <laughs> and Stacey Abrams be the Democratic <laughs> ticket.
Stacey Abrams. All they want to do is sell covers. It and might be that's more. That's what it's going to be. It might be Stacey Plaskett these days because I don't even see anybody really talking about Stacey Abrams no, that much anymore. The, she's fallen off the radar. After all of the voting rights lawsuits ended. Yeah. You know, not in her interest. You know, they they failed. Um, uh, the uh, sorry, the the voter uh, suppression lawsuits rather. And after the expose uh, about her having funneled so much money to her friends law firm in order to litigate those unsuccessful lawsuits, it seems like even the Democratic Party has put some distance between themselves and her. Or maybe she's just stepped away from the public eye for a while to get her own life in order. What is clear is that the same isn't true of uh, Pete Buttigieg, who's very much rearing to go. Former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner commented on Wired's post on Buttigieg uh, that, and, and said the following. With a remarkable blend of intellect and empathy, Pete Buttigieg brings a fresh perspective to the forefront of the public discourse. That's from the article, of course. Turner responded, was there empathy for, the, uh, East, for East Palestine residents? I think that's a very fair question, one that the author of this piece declined to ask. Yeah, it, this it's getting just torn apart on Twitter. I'm scrolling through <laughs> the... Uh... Um, uh, Sagar Jetty, a former host of this show, Breaking Point, says he's like a Big Bang Theory character, a dumb person's idea of what a smart person should look like. That's Actually I, I smart that's right. and competent people are laughing at him. I think that's right. And the article, by the way, it touches on these aspects of his... <laughs> Charles C.W. Cook of National Review, inspired by Virginia Heffernan's journalism, I sat down with Pete Buttigieg to discuss barges, Latin poetry, my enduring love for his cathedral of a mind, a love that makes <laughs> breath poor and speech unable. <laughs> it's, it's pathetic. It's, oh, he wrote a whole article. I, I had a... Um, and an airline uh, industry have, expert on my show a few months ago. And one of the things that he pointed out was that there's so much that Buttigieg has ex ex exclusive ability to control in his position at DOT, like he, that is exclusively, exclusively in his province. So it's not one of those things where, oh, he can't do X, Y, and Z because Congress isn't with him or he has to pass this bill and Republicans are going to block it. Pete Buttigieg could literally be live, making consumers' lives better in some really meaningful industries. In an election season, it is declining to do so and getting patted on the back for it. Uh, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. just reading this Charles C.W. Cook. This is a parody. Uh, this is a National Review conservative writer uh, doing a parody of this piece. It is so funny. The man's mind is a cathedral, and I, a mere congregant, have been invited into its inner sanctum. In between the seductive sips of, I can't even pronounce this, I assume this is a fancy Chardonnay, atop which he builds his heady pedagogical flights, Pete Buttigieg leans back into his pulchritudinous chair and takes me through the history of the Asian subcontinent. I am sitting in the great man's office in the heart of Washington, D.C., stealing a few moments of his valuable time. I was early and he was late, but that was to be expected. Some people require their own rules. Yeah, this feels this very Obama very, era very where good. liberals where liberals felt like if they just it goes on and on again. Read it. Got got enough people with Harvard degrees who are over six foot tall with enough identity. How tall diversity. is Pete Buttigieg? Is he tall? Uh, I don't think he's especially tall. He's like what's his sign? What are we? We're all interested in <laughs> like that. We everybody involved in this show except for me always wants to know everybody's sign. <laughs> and there, there's a lot of oh, you're a Leo. That means X, Y, Z. You know what it means, we're especially as a Leo. I do know what it Leo means man. having listened to you and our producers what, talk about one it. One other so thing much. for the for the leftists who have been cultivating a distrust of uh, <laughs> being put a judge for oh, we're getting we're getting word that he's a Capricorn. I don't know what which, that means. They're diligent. They're hardworking. Um, they are a little. Well, I don't want to. I had. I had no one love a lot of Capricorns, but they can be a little bit um, rigid, uh, flat. Um, they can be kind of mean, mm. actually. If they're on your side, the meanness feels like support. But when they're not on your side, they're some of the meanest people that I know. I will say that. Interesting. But, but you were saying about the left. Yeah. The left has been cultivating a frustration with Pete Buttigieg for a really long time, precisely because he does this cosplaying as being an actual leftist. This article sings, sings praises of his father being a, a, not a notable Marxist uh, professor, as though any of that made it over to Pete Buttigieg. It talks about how Pete Buttigieg used to love Bernie Sanders, and all of this feels like a shorthand from, for come on, left, you should really like this guy, but the left isn't stupid. One of the things that it's laundering is it, talk, it asks him specifically about neoliberalism as a principle, yeah. which is, again, evidence of how weirdly kind of out of touch the focus of this. Nobody speaks in those kind of terms, unless you're an academic or very deep on the online left having conversations about how uh, Hillary Clinton is a neoliberal shill, right? But she asks him a question about neoliberalism, and she defines it as 
the happy idea that consumer markets and liberal democracy will always expand and will always expand together. Now, I'm very much on the online left, and I travel in academic circles. I have never heard it defined in that way as a patently good thing that everything is going to get better and in, in the markets and social democracy and everything that's going to be, you know, why wouldn't anybody be uh, against, uh, why wouldn't anybody be against neoliberalism? Neoliberalism usually defines a system of austerity, price controls, deregulation, a lot of the things that people on the populist left and right have been criticizing for years that has devastated Midwestern towns like the ones Pete Buttigieg is from. And so this papering over of it uh, as, a, as a philosophy, as, a, as a, uh, an economic um, approach and not interrogating why it is that Pete Buttigieg actually supports specifically and explicitly neoliberalism. It's just more evidence of the whitewashing that this, this particular article does. It's a mess. We encourage you to read it. Very enjoyable. Tomorrow on Rising, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any of our content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're available anywhere there are podcasts. And we hope you have had a good week. We've had a good week. We've had a good week. I can finally get back to... Legends of Zelda. Legend of Zelda. I'll have my review next week, I promise. <laughs> I've even threatened to bring the game into the studio. Hey, I'll play. I like a video game. I have an older brother. I know how to get I know how to get down. We know you're clamoring for it. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>